Merry Christmas. Welcome to the parish community of St. Francis of Assisi. <laughs> As we begin our celebration, let us praise God singing hymn number 99. O come all ye faithful, number 99. Please stand. And on this holy day, we continue our celebration in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. My friends, may the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. A special welcome to everybody gathered here, especially those of you who are regular parishioners and those of you who are visiting or who are here for the first time. We are honored that you have chosen to worship with us on this holy day a day that celebrates God's great gift of his son, Jesus Christ, the Prince of Peace, who came to show us the way. We take a moment to recognize that as a human family, we, uh, at times, we fail to recognize the invitations that God extends to us of how we are called to live and to love. 
And for those times, we ask for his mercy and for a change of heart. And so we pray. Lord Jesus, you are the Prince of Peace who calls us all by name. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you are Son of God and Son of Mary. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the Word made flesh who dwells among us. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on all of us, forgive all of our sins, and bring us all to everlasting life. Let us pray. Good and gracious God, on this holy day you gave us your Son, the Lord of the universe, wrapped in swaddling clothes, the Savior of all, lying in the manger. On this holy day, draw us into the mystery of your love. Join our voices with the heavenly hosts that we may sing your glory on high. Give us a place among the shepherds that we may find the one for whom we have waited, Jesus Christ, the Word made flesh, who lives and reigns with you in unity with the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated.
A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Upon those who dwelt in the land of gloom, a light has shone. You have brought them abundant joy and great rejoicing, as they rejoice before you as at the harvest, as people make merry when dividing spoils. For the yoke that burdened them, the pole on their shoulder, and the rod of their taskmaster you have smashed as on the day of Midian. For every boot that tramped in battle, every cloak rolled in blood, will be burned as fuel for flames. For a child is born to us, a son is given us, upon his shoulder dominion rests. They name him Wonder Counselor, God Hero, Father Forever, Prince of Peace. His dominion is vast and forever peaceful. From David's throne and over his kingdom, which he confirms and sustains by judgment and justice, both now and forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Thank you. 
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to Titus. Beloved, the grace of God has appeared, saving all and training us to reject godless ways and worldly desires and to live temperately, justly, and devoutly in this age as we await the blessed hope, the appearance of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us to deliver us from all lawlessness and to cleanse for himself a people as his own, eager to do what is good. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. My friends, the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. In those days, Caesar Augustus published a decree ordering a census of the whole world. His first census took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria. Everyone went to register, each to his own town. And so Joseph went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to David's town of Bethlehem, because he was of the house and the lineage of David, to register with Mary, his espoused wife, who was with child. And while they were there, the days of her confinement were completed. She gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the place where travelers lodged. There were shepherds in the locality living in the fields and keeping a night watch by turns in their flock. The angel of the Lord appeared to them as the glory of the Lord shone around them. They were very much afraid. But the angel said to them, you have nothing to fear. I come to proclaim good news to you tidings of great joy to be shared by the whole people. On this day in David's city, a Savior has been born to you, the Messiah and Lord. Let this be a sign to you. In a manger you will find an infant wrapped in swaddling clothes. Suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and peace on earth to those on whom his favor rests. The Gospel of the Lord. Well, again, a very uh, special good morning to all of you gathered here, those of you who are regular parishioners and those of you who are visiting from out of town far away, people of faith and people who maybe struggle with your faith. I am honored and we are honored that you have come to St. Francis to worship and be part of our Christmas celebration. I have, I have numerous, I have probably have about five 
cough drops in my throat. I, I have kind of, I'm not sick, I just kind of lost my voice um, from attending too many Siena games. And I'm, of course, yelling for absolutely no purpose. It's doing no good, as you well know. So of some things, we should not dwell. Here we are on this special Christmas day, and it's always a reminder um, of so many different things, but also family gatherings. And I call to mind my Thanksgiving family gathering, and it's at my niece's, and she has different family members who come as well, and there's lots of people that you don't know. I mean, a lot of times, thankfully, I almost wonder if we should have name tags, but that's another topic. But just the same, uh, at Thanksgiving, I just by chance happened to be sitting next to the girlfriend of my brother-in-law's cousin. And uh, lo and behold, she's Jewish. And um, so we had an interesting conversation, and she was just inquiring about a lot of things. And uh, where she lives, uh, someplace in Clifton Park, she was saying how, you know, the people, you know, obviously the neighborhood was, you know, people get pretty pretty uh, festive with regard to Christmas decorations. But she said the people that live next door, she said they go all out. And, you know, I, I, she said, you know, I get the thing with the Santa and the reindeer, but, you know, like the sheep and these kings and this big manger, I don't get that. And so I was trying to explain it to her, and um, I proceeded to say, well, I said, you know, it's one of those very special symbols, if you will, that are very, it's very common to Christians. Uh, it, it, it represents kind of a little uh, a reminder of the uh, context into which Jesus was born. But more times than not, it, I think a lot of times it gets lost, some of the real meaning gets lost in the translation. And um, I proceeded to call attention to some of the key things that are often found in common mangers that we put on our mantelpiece or on our front lawn. Take, for example, you always have shepherds, and they always look like very nice, well-meaning people. But quite truthfully, 2,000 years ago, to be a shepherd, you couldn't really have asked for a worse job. Um, oftentimes, shepherds were um, kind of considered the dregs of society. Um, Many were thieves and often would rob other people's sheep, and um, they were really people in society that had a very low status. And yet, just the same, there were many of them, and they're always part of every manger scene. And of course, the wise men, which we really don't honor and celebrate until Epiphany, um, they were often identified not as Jews, but men from the East. And although they were wise, they were often considered um, kind of a little bit to be outsiders, not really a part of the in-group. And then, of course, you look at the key people, Mary and Joseph, and they always look very serene and very pious and holy. But again, given the circumstances of which they were a part of, uh, I would guess that they looked probably quite different. And we have to stay mindful, too. Mary was, uh, you know, a 14-year-old teenage peasant illiterate girl um, who, quite truthfully, having a child out of wedlock would have been a candidate to get stoned um, by the people in the community. And, of course, Joseph, I'm sure, was rather confused and perplexed. Why am I staying with this woman? Uh, I don't think she's been faithful. Maybe she has. Maybe she hasn't. I don't really quite understand it. But lo and behold, this child is, again, no ordinary baby. It is the Son of God. And so, again, the setting, too, of a manger. Uh, again, it wasn't a Holiday Inn with a nice uh, changing table. Quite the opposite. Um, it was the place where you went to, uh, not that you wanted to spend a lot of time, but it was really more of a feeding station for a lot of the, your animals on your farm who would often leave their droppings there. And uh, I would guess it was not the most pleasant of places to spend any length of time. And so when we look at the deeper meaning that is often found in this image of the manger, whatever form it may take, it reminds us not only of the conditions and the circumstances of that first Christmas, if you will, but it also hopefully reminds us of the true miracle we celebrate. And the miracle is that our God is a God who chose to enter into the human condition in a very unique and special way. Not as, you know, a, you know, driving a big, powerful, 
you know, Range Rover and being a sumo wrestler to show off his power and his might and his glory. Instead, he came into the world naked and fragile, humble, poor, and vulnerable. And of course, God chose to enter into the very messy, complex human condition that we all share with all of its many limitations and struggles. And God wanted to remind us that he is one with us, to embrace us, to enter into our pain and our suffering and our complexity and the many things that come along with being human. And of course, the common phrase that we all say, especially during this time of Emmanuel, O come, O come, Emmanuel. Emmanuel means I am with you. And that is really what God is. God is with us. He is with us in the midst of, regardless of whether we are dirty, smelly shepherds, people who consider themselves outsiders who maybe don't fit in, people who may be poor, illiterate, outcasts, or newlyweds who are confused and uncertain and trying to find their way. And of course, the miracle is, again, a God who seeks to enter into our condition, to be with us, to embrace us with his love, and to eliminate our confusion, our fear, our own brokenness, and the things that prevent us from being close to God. And of course, God reminds us, I am with you, regardless of where you are or what, how you identify. I can't help but to think of a podcast that I heard not too long ago. I make reference to uh, this priest quite often. Uh, it's Father Greg Boyle, he's a Jesuit, and in, he lives in Los Angeles. Uh, he was a parish priest in the slums of Los Angeles, and he had a lot of contact with various gang members. And so he started a, a, a ministry called Homeboy Ministry, which is kind of, I think, to the, lar the one of the largest um, gang-related rehabilitation centers throughout the world. And uh, Father Greg has uh, attained a lot of notoriety. He is a re recipient of numerous humanitarian awards, speaks at various universities and colleges and conferences, and oftentimes when he goes, he brings what he refers to as one of the homies, homeboys, with him. Homeboys or homegirls who are, you know, have kind of graduated from this uh, anti-gang program. And it's quite life-changing to say the least. Lo and behold, at this one particular gathering that he had at uh, Creighton University, a Jesuit school, um, probably attended by over a thousand people. The gentleman that he had with him was Mario. And Mario was somebody who gave quite a captivating presentation for about 10 minutes, sharing his story of growing up in the hood, uh, being neglected by his parents, abused, beaten, and just experiencing the horrors of inner city um, life uh, with with conditions that are almost almost impossible to even understand or enter into, and yet he kept the people pretty much at the edge of their seats as he shared his own story of uh, the struggles that he had growing up and what eventually led him to come to the homeboy ministry. Um, at the end of his talk, he proceeded to uh, the, he was asked he asked the community if anybody had any questions. And at what point, uh, a woman stood up and she said, you mentioned that you have two kids. Can I ask you what kind of advice or what pieces of wisdom you share with them? And Mario, of course, uh, stopped for a second. Uh, he held on to the microphone. He, he kind of bowed his head and closed his eyes as he thought of the answer. And after a couple seconds, um, tears slowly started to roll down his cheeks. And he said, I, I, I would say to them that I hope they don't turn out like me. And of course, there was a paralyzing silence in the whole auditorium. And the woman said, why? You are kind. You are just. You are good and you are wise. I would hope that your kids do turn out like you. At which point, the 1,000 people in the audience stood up and clapped. Mario stood there with his eyes closed and tears continued to just fall down his cheeks. No doubt, Mario came to know the true meaning that we celebrate today of Christmas. The thunderous applause was undoubtedly a reminder of Emmanuel, 
God reminding Matt, uh, Mario that he was with them. And for us on this holy day, it is an opportunity for us not only to celebrate this wonderful feast, but maybe to courageously enter into our own manger, to lock arms and to stand in solidarity with the smelly shepherds and the outsiders and the Marios who stand next to us, to be embraced by the loving God whose life we celebrate today, who sees something within all of us that maybe sometimes we don't see within ourselves, and to hopefully join the voices that we are a people who maybe have walked in darkness, but we see a great light, and that light is Jesus Christ. It is a light that hopefully continues to guide us on our own journey of light, and it is a light that dwells within us that hopefully we seek to reveal to all the world. May God's peace and all that is good be with you, and Merry Christmas. Together we stand, and in one voice and one heart, we profess our creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, the creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell and rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. We now bring our own prayers and our needs and our hopes before the Lord. Our response will be, Lord, hear our prayer. For the church to be a welcoming people to those seeking a place of solace and hope, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For unity among Christians and harmony and understanding among peoples of faith and goodwill, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our, hear our prayer. prayer. For peace in Ukraine, Gaza, and wherever hatred, violence, and war reign, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For the willingness to preserve and conserve our planet for future generations, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. For healing within our nation from the uncompromising positions, violence, and racism that divide us, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For courage within us to address the plight of children who suffer the most from war, famine, greed, and poverty, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For families with children and those expecting the birth of a child, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For a spirit of joy within all people who labor on behalf of others during these holy days, including medical staffs, police officers, firefighters, and emergency teams, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For compassionate hearts within us, so as to reach out to people who carry the burdens of loneliness, addictions, mental and chronic illnesses, and homelessness, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the Spirit's gift of hope for all who mourn and eternal life for our dead in Christ, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For the people and situations we hold deep within our hearts and bring to this holy table, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. 
Good and gracious God, trusting in your enduring love for us as we offer our deepest yearnings. May the light of your son's resurrection dispel our fears and bring us into the fullness of your reign. We ask this through Emmanuel, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in unity with the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. As we prepare the Lord's table and ourselves to offer the sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, let us join in singing hymn number 85, O Little Town of Bethlehem, number 85. Pray, my friends, that this, our sacrifice, will be acceptable to our good and loving God. Good and gracious God, on this holy day that celebrates Jesus Christ, the Prince of Peace, the Savior of the world, we ask that you accept the special gifts that we bring to your table, the gifts of bread and wine and the gifts of our lives. May they always be acceptable and pleasing to you. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. My friends, the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and ju just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, almighty and ever-loving God. For in the mystery of the Word made flesh, a new light of your glory has shone upon the eyes of our mind, so that as we recognize in him God made visible, we may be caught up through him in a love that is invisible. And so, with all the angels, the archangels, and the powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, and together, without end, we acclaim.
Lord, you are holy indeed, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending forth your Spirit upon them, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, Jesus took bread into his sacred hands. He blessed it and broke it. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when the supper had ended, he took the chalice. Once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant. Be poured forth for you and for all people, so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in remembrance of me. The Mystery of Faith. As we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation. We give you thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and to minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking in the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Lord, remember your church <clears throat> spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Edward, our Bishop, and to all your holy people your Son has gained for you. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on all of us, we pray, that together with Mary, the Blessed Virgin Mother of God, with Joseph, her spouse, with the apostles, the martyrs, St. Francis of Assisi, and all the saints on whose constant intercession we rely for help. May we praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. For it is through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in union with the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Now we stand, and together in one voice and one heart, we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be free from stress, safe from all sins, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, my peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, for you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. My friends, may the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all of you. Let us now share with one another a sign of Christ's peace. Peace, 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 peace be with you. Peace be with you. Thank you very much. <laughs>
My friends, behold, behold the Lamb of God. Behold the one who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. communion, I invite everyone to come down the center aisle in two lines. Uh, when you hear the words, the body of Christ, extend your hands, say amen, and then return to your seat by the side aisle. If by chance you do not want to receive communion but would like to receive a blessing, just place your hands across your chest, receive the blessing, and then return to your seat by the side aisle. on the ribbon.
Gracious and loving God, today we celebrate with joy the birth of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Grant that through worthy and holy lives, we may be welcomed into his glorious company now and forever. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Before departing, I just want to take an opportunity to thank uh, the many people in our parish, mostly volunteers uh, who, who help to make our celebrations uh, so joyous and meaningful, who are part of the decorating and the arranging of the readings and all the behind the scenes. And a special thank you to our musicians, um, who also by their music, by their singing and their leading us in song, help to uh, enhance our liturgies to give praise to God. So let's thank them with our... And also on behalf of the parish here at St. Francis, please know uh, that we wish you all a very blessed and happy and holy Christmas. And uh, I'm, I'm guessing Santa was good to everybody. And uh, hopefully again, we'll continue to hold on to that Christmas spirit during this week of Christmas. And uh, that we may seek to reveal the good news of Jesus Christ, the Prince of Peace, who is our Lord and Savior, and to share that with the world that we are a part of. My friends, the Lord be with you. Let us bow our heads and pray for God's blessing. May the God of infinite goodness, who by the incarnation of his Son has driven the darkness from the world and by the glorious birth has illumined this holy day, drive far from all of us the darkness of vice and illumine within our hearts the light of virtue. And may God, who by the Incarnation brought together the earthly and heavenly realm, fill all of us with the gift of peace and favor and make us sharers in the Church of Heaven. And may the blessings of Almighty God be upon all of us, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. My friends, our celebration has ended, but our lives continue. Let us go in peace to love God and to serve each other. Merry Christmas. Let us go forth singing hymn number 102. Hark the Herald Angels Sing, number 102. Get that voice going. Get that voice going. 